Good afternoon. It's a slightly different Northwest today this lunchtime after the announcement this morning that Diane Oxbury has died. Diane was a much loved fixture in all our living rooms for almost a quarter of a century, presenting the weather on Northwest tonight, as well as numerous other television programmes. Her colleagues at the BBC are heartbroken, as many viewers are as well. But our thoughts are with Diane's family this lunchtime. Here's Stuart Flinders. Nothing Rain or shine, the weather was always better with Diane. Northwest tonight was lucky to have her. I want to go round the posse here, Diane. Say hello to Diane over there. Hello, Diane. How are you doing? She'd already worked on radios one and two with Steve Wright and on this occasion Paul McCartney and Simon Mayo. Years later, she had a show on BBC Radio Manchester with Eamon O'Neill. Yes, but if I Googled you now, I bet there'd be some sort of results. Bronze medallion in life saving. I'm captain of the synchronised <laughs> swimming, swimming team, team. obviously. Uh -huh. What you saw on television, what you heard on the radio is what you got. Um, she was self deprecating. I think, you know, she, she didn't realise just how talented she was and perhaps didn't realise how loved she was because she was humble. And outside of the studios, you know, she supported charities. She was a patron of St. Anne's Hospice for many years and she was wonderful with every single person uh, she met. Diane's break into TV came with a Saturday morning children's programme called The 815 from Manchester. Here she is with two very young members of Take That. Still a kid, still a kid, still still a kid. kid at heart. But well, I've got Gary and Rob with me. Do you want to do some letters, Gary? Mm -hmm. well, she became part of the Northwest Tonight family in the mid 90s. Yes, I'm going to be here tonight and every night this week bringing you a detailed weather forecast with information supplied by the Manchester Weather Centre. Behind the warmth and the wit, there was a cool professional. Presenting the weather is a lot more difficult than it looks. They don't have auto cues, so the weather presenters all do it purely ad libbed and they never know quite how long the duration is going to be, depending on what's in the programme. And Diane was just brilliant. I mean, I've, I've seen over the years, I've seen Diane do a 10 second weather and a four and a half minute weather. Hello and welcome to Inside Out Northwest with me, Diane Oxbury. As the presenter of Inside Out, Diane delivered hard-hitting stories. People whose lives were in turmoil opened up to her. For the loss of her 18-year-old son. Three, two. It's less than two months since I joined her in Blackpool on a fundraiser for children in need, the plot for Pudsey. Just weeks before her death, she seemed so fit and strong, it was hard to keep up with her. Luckily, there were countless interruptions from Northwest Tonight viewers, some of whom had travelled a long way just to meet her. All the way? All the way from Warrington to see you today. Oh, yeah. we this is how Diane will be remembered. Warm, witty and never knocked off her stride. God love her. Ooh, you've made it sunshine I have made for everybody. It for once. Stuart Flinders there looking back on Diane's life. Uh, Diane's husband, Ian Hindle, has paid tribute to her today. He described her as an inspiration, saying that Diane was an amazing wife and mother, a remarkable person who will live in our hearts. Ian said, she'll leave a massive void and the children and myself will miss her more than anyone can imagine. There have been thousands of tributes from celebrities and ordinary people too, all expressing their love and admiration for Diane. Here's what some of you have said so far today. Just some of your comments today. Gordon Burns is here. You recognise him, of course. He worked with Diane for 15 years. Gordon, it's an interview that you and I never thought we'd have to do. It's, it's, it's shocking. It's unbelievable. I don't even know how I'm going to get the words out. I mean, you know, we all loved her so much. I worked with her for 15 years on this programme. And she was the most outstanding broadcaster, first and foremost. And many people at home probably... Um, 
wouldn't realise just how good she was unless you actually worked with her, mm. uh, that she could tailor anything. She was often believing she had two and a half minutes to do the weather, <laughs> and she'd be told down her ear, sorry, because presenters like me couldn't shut a politician up in an interview, so we're overrunning, and she'd be told, you've only got one minute or only 45 seconds, and she could still tailor it to that. Nobody would have known the difference. No. Um, and when we were out at, uh, doing outside broadcasts, um, like at Tatton Park, she would do a whole feature on a garden and interview the person involved and do a little rap from that and go straight in, as you know, to the weather, which is another two minutes without auto cue, without notes, without anything. Absolutely professional to the end and brilliant at it. She was the consummate professional, wasn't she? Um, we've seen that Peter Kay clip a few times. You were a part and parcel of that, but he knew very well what he was doing, didn't he? It was. I wanted Peter to do my farewell on, on a television interview, my last ever interview, and he came in to do it. My family were in the green room uh, for that and Peter came in the green room and told them what he was going to do uh, to Diane's weather and uh, I mean my wife uh, said are you sure and he said oh, Diane's lovely she can cope with anything and that's absolutely right she was never thrown by a single thing and she certainly wasn't thrown by Peter Kay she enjoyed the fun but she kept control and it, it, unwittingly for me, he, he maybe coined her epitaph there when he said Diane Oxbury God love her she made the sunshine for everyone Absolutely right, and I've heard from Peter today saying how devastated and saddened he is to hear uh, about Diane's passing. I mean, he thought she was fantastic. What was it, if it's possible to do it briefly, what was it that made her so popular? We've seen so many viewers' comments today, so many people have been in touch. What was it that made her so special? Well, she just... Some people have a real gift of communicating uh, down that lens, um, that people feel that you're talking directly to them uh, and you're taking them into your story and so on. And she was in their living rooms every night, but sort of very intimately with them. They all thought Diane was talking to her. And everywhere I went round the region, um, people never asked me first anything about myself or the programme or anything. The first question always was, where's Diane? Have yeah. you got Diane? Where's Diane? It never changed, just so you know. Uh, I'm sure it it's didn't. Still the same. And even after I left, we. Uh, she had a great, great sense of humour. I mm. texted uh, regularly after a programme and I spotted something and you would make her laugh. And she would come back with an even better comment <laughs> to me. And her sense of humour and so on was fantastic. She was outstanding. But our hearts today are with Ian uh, and her kids, all of whom she absolutely adored. Gordon, thank you so much for coming in. We're thank very you. grateful to you. We'll hear more from Gordon on North West Tonight at half past six. So many people have wanted to pay their respects to Diane today that the BBC has opened books of condolence for her family. You will find them at Key House at Media City in Salford, also in the reception areas at BBC Radio Lancashire in Blackburn and at BBC Radio Merseyside in Liverpool. Let's bring you a couple of other bits of news from the region this lunchtime. The number of affordable homes built across the northwest over the last three years is less than a third of what's needed. 14,000 homes have been built across the region since 2015 for people who can't afford the full cost of renting or buying. But analysis by the BBC's Sunday Politics programme shows that councils estimated that nearly 45,000 homes were required. And a new ticketing system on Metrolink across Greater Manchester starts on Sunday. Passengers will be charged according to how many of the zones they pass through on their journey. Transport for Greater Manchester says that the charges will make fares cheaper in most cases. Here's the forecast with Alex Hamilton. Good afternoon. Well, it's been quite grey so far today. The high pressure that's been in charge for the last few days is moving out the way. The ice bar is starting to squeeze more closely together. You can expect some quite windy and blustery conditions over the weekend. As for this afternoon, lots of cloud around, a little bit of brightness here and there where the cloud thins and breaks with highs of around 9 or 10 degrees Celsius. Then overnight tonight, we'll continue to see more cloud around, perhaps some drizzle starting to move in in the early hours as well, with lows of around 6 degrees degrees Celsius. It does look quite windy tomorrow, the best of the brightness first thing in the morning before it starts to cloud over again in the afternoon and there again you can expect highs in double figures of around 11 degrees Celsius, the slightly milder weather continuing into the weekend. We will have many more tributes to Diane Oxbury on Northwest tonight at half past six. I hope you can join us then.